Hello everyone, happy Wednesday. So I made a post earlier today saying that I would hop on live. I am on live Facebook and Instagram. And so no matter where you are tuning in from, thank you so much for joining today. I have had so many questions about this topic. It is a topic of discussion a lot in my community group as well as my um, membership group. So my Burn, Fat, and Feast participants as well as our monthly membership group, we talk a lot about gut health. And it is kind of a hot topic, but it is very, very important to be aware of your gut health. And so I'm excited to be on today to give you some tips. I also have a blog post on this and I will leave that below in the comments after we hop off today as well. So you definitely want to check that out because there are more tips in there too. So if you are joining live, thank you so much for hopping on. My name is Sarah Thomas. I'm a personal trainer, a fitness instructor, as well as a nutritionist, and I am the founder of Refine life fitness and the creator of the burn fat and feast online wellness program we are talking gut health in particular today how to heal your gut health naturally so let's talk a little bit about what gut health is what that means like what your gut is actually composed of and that sort of thing so first and foremost your gastrointestinal tract is lined with microbes and we call these your microbiome it includes bacteria fungi and even viruses in our gut i know it sounds kind of gross but that's what our gut is compromised of so it does maybe sound a little gross, maybe a little unhealthy too to talk about, but we actually need bacteria in our gut to maintain its health. We need both good bacteria as well as the bad bacteria in our gut. But what often happens with our gut health is that we have too much of the bad guys and not enough of the good guys in our butt. It gut. It leads to inflammation. It leads to all types of issues that we experience day to day and sometimes we don't even realize it is gut health or gut health issues but I'm gonna give you some of these signs in just a second and you can kind of internalize them to see if they are speaking to you as far as whether or not your gut is healthy or not so before I move forward I just want to explain to you what how it is it how everything is made up in your gut so think of your gut as a a net and so there are these nets this big old net in your gut and it's laced together like this but what typically happens when we have bad gut health is we get what we call leaky gut and leaky gut is simply that the net starts separating you get holes in your gut and stuff starts leaking through so the good stuff the bad stuff everything starts leaking through your gut it can happen many different ways um, but a big one here is that when you are on a lot of antibiotics trying to kill some of those bacteria in your gut what happens when you're on antibiotics is that you actually kill the good guys it kills everything and so think of it as a rainforest you need lots of good guys lots of bad guys to make it work and to make it flourish so if you want a rainforest to grow and to be green you have to have the good and the bad everything working together the same in your gut and so if you don't have the good bacteria and the bad bacteria and those antibiotics wipe everything out it's really not the best thing for you and so if you're constantly sick and you're on antibiotics a lot you probably do not have very strong gut health and so let's dive into just some signs some clear signs that can point to an imbalance in your gut and it can can, can potentially make you sick can make you uh, just not have that strong gut health and you might just feel kind of fatigued throughout your day all right so the first thing I want to talk about is your stomach just doesn't feel right. If you're walking through your day and you feel bloated, you feel constipated, maybe nauseous, maybe your stomach is just rumbling, you have heartburn, those are all symptoms of problems in your gut. So gastrointestinal discomfort, especially after you're eating like a carbohydrate rich meal, it can be the result of poor digestion 
and absorption of your carbohydrates. So reflux, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel disease, colitis, all of those have been linked to an imbalance in your microbiome within your gut, okay? That's first and foremost. Secondly, if you're craving certain foods, craving foods, especially sweets, sugar, um, that can mean that you have an imbalance of gut bacteria. Y'all remember, sugar itself is a huge, huge thing that we, we get we get addicted to it. It's like a drug. Sugar, sugar is a drug. And when you get addicted to it and you crave more and more of it, your gut is very, very unhealthy. There can be an overgrowth of yeast inside your gut, which could happen over the course of multiple antibiotics, lots of sugar inside of your gut, anything like that. So if you're craving certain foods, you probably have an imbalance in your gut. Number three, if you're anxious or you're feeling a little down, 80 to 90% of people who are anxious or feeling down have some sort of imbalance in their gut. The fourth thing is if you're not sleeping well, we all probably have been there a time or two where we just aren't sleeping through the night well, we fall asleep but we can't stay asleep. So if you don't have enough serotonin, it can lead to bouts of insomnia, difficult getting to sleep, chronic fatigue, uh, symptoms of fibromyalgia, they all are tied to gut bacteria imbalances. The fifth thing that you want to look for is your skin. If your skin is acting up at all, you have skin rashes, you have eczema, um, any type of chronic skin conditions characterized by like uh, inflamed, itchy redness, blotchy skin, anything like that, that can develop where there is an, an imbalance in your gut bacteria. So if you have the sixth thing that you want to look for, the next sign is if you have any sort of autoimmune disorder or condition, imbalance in that microbiome within our gut actually plays a big role in more than just GI symptoms. So diseases affecting your immune system, such as rheumatoid arthritis, for example, multiple sclerosis, they can be tied to imbalances in your gut as well. It's very important to note here, and I want to let you guys know because I feel like I talk to the to my clients about this all the time, and I don't feel like the general public is, is really aware of this as much as we should be, but 80% of our immune system, like just let that register for a second, 80% of your immune system is housed in your gut. Okay, let that sink in for a minute. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. And so 80% of anything health related, if we're having any sort of health issues, you've got to look within your gut first and foremost. Okay, so let's talk now about how to improve your gut health. All right, so having that healthy gut, that healthy microbiome is essential essential to your success in just daily life. So you want to focus on eating the right foods. And there are certain foods that actually will help you create a healthier gut. So there are better foods than others when we're talking about creating a healthy gut here. And I'm not going to go into all of them on our live today, but like I said, I do have a blog post that was just posted and I have all of these foods listed in the blog post, but I'm just going to touch on a few of them that you can kind of think about adding into your diet. All right. So And the first one I want to talk about is apple cider vinegar. You probably have heard about apple cider vinegar. There's a reason that it's considered a wellness jack of all trades for sure. It helps you create hydraulic um, acid within your body. Uh, I'm sorry, hydrochloric acid in your body. And it actually is beneficial in your belly acid. So it helps you digest fats. It helps you digest carbohydrates and proteins. It just gets things moving within your system and that creates a healthier gut. It also can aid in some weight loss. It helps you, again, digest things. So if you have irritable bowel syndrome, you can get benefits from having some apple cider vinegar. 
The next one I want to talk about is dairy-free yogurt. So I say dairy-free yogurt because we like to talk to our clients about being dairy-free for many different reasons, for mainly because dairy is really hard for our bodies to digest and break down. So when we're talking about yogurts. I am talking about a dairy-free yogurt. Many of those dairy-free alternatives are made from almond, soy, rice milk. They're so much easier for us to digest than our dairy counterparts. So... There's lots of new ones available on the market and they contain gut loving live active cultures. And so you wanna look for some of those when you're thinking about creating a healthier gut uh, microbiome within you. Okay, and my, my next, the next one, my most favorite is sauerkraut. So not everyone um, loves sauerkraut and that's totally fine, but sauerkraut is a naturally fermented food that has microorganisms. And so when you're talking about creating a healthier gut, you wanna do it naturally. Sauerkraut is one of the most beneficial things that you can eat. It's naturally fermented, creating a healthier a microbiome within your gut. And it also is a healthy and natural probiotic. I know everybody wants to take a probiotic supplement these days, and we will dive in more to supplements later, but obviously supplements are not the best. First and foremost, you want to have those natural foods. Sauerkraut is your natural probiotic for your gut. So definitely think about adding some of that within your week. And so for us personally, we have we like to add sauerkraut in once a week. We really try to get it in a, a meal at least one time a week. Um, and I will say for those of you that are asking about kids, Yes, some days my kids love sauerkraut, other, day, other days they don't like it. You know, kids some days love things and then they hate things. So we continue to offer it. Sometimes they eat it, sometimes they don't. But my husband and I definitely will eat it at least once a week when we're at home. Um, then the last one I want to talk about here live, and then again you can see all that list um, on the blog post, is wild salmon. Okay. Lots of benefits for within salmon when you're drinking or drinking when you're eating salmon, but you want to make sure that you are choosing wild salmon and not farm raised salmon. That is very important. You have those omega three fatty acids in salmon. It's a very powerful anti inflammatory in our body. So if you have any sort of inflammation in your gut, that's going to help that inflammation in your gut. So eating salmon again, like once a week and keeping it the wild variety and not farm raised is great for your gut health. So those are all the tips that I want to give you live today. I will leave that blog post link in the comment section so that you guys can go there and see all of them. I also have some of my favorites that um, we personally use and there's some links there if you want to see any of our favorite um, ways to naturally heal your gut. And before we hop off, I just do want to say that we don't use these, all of these every day. Like that would be crazy. That'd be way too much to even think about, but we do use them throughout our week. So like I said, sauerkraut, we'll probably eat once a week. Wild salmon, we'll use once a week. And so taking all of these and just incorporating them into your daily routine and your daily eating habits is the best way to keep that gut healthy. So um, I will leave that blog post below. below. Thanks so much for hopping on. You guys have an awesome day and I will talk to you very soon.